Afternoon, warriors. Today I'm reading from Orson Marden's book titled An Iron Will. Orson Marden was the original founder of Success Magazine back in the late 1800s. He died in 1924. The copyright on this book is 1901, and he spent his entire life putting out inspirational and motivational literature, hard-hitting, warrior-like kind. And uh, whenever I read his stuff, I have a picture in my mind that whenever he saw somebody feeling sorry for themselves, somebody sitting in their own pile of poop, I have this picture that he would grab them around the neck, hang them up on a meat hook, and use their body as a heavy bag. So if you are on the email list of Deepak Chopra, your stomach might be queasy by the time I get done reading this. But if you are of a warrior mind and spirit, you're going to love it. Training the will. The education of the will is the object of our existence, says Emerson. Nor is this putting it too strongly if we take into account the human will and its relations to the divine. This accords with the saying of J. Stuart Mill that a character is a completely fashioned will. In respect to mere mundane relations, the development and discipline of one's willpower is of supreme moment in relation to success in life. No man can ever estimate the power of will. It is a part of the divine nature, all of a piece with the power of creation. We speak of God's fiat, let there be light. Man has his fiat, will. The achievements of history have been the choices, the determinations, the creations of the human will. It was the will, quiet or pugnacious, gentle or grim, of men like Wilberforce and Garrison. Goodyear and Cyrus Field, Bismarck and Grant, that made them indomitable. They simply would do what they planned to do. Such men can no more be stopped than the sun can be or the tide. Most men fail, not through lack of education or agreeable personal qualities, but from lack of dogged determination, from lack of dauntless will. It is impossible, says Charmant, to look into the conditions under which the battle of life is being fought without perceiving how much really depends upon the extent to which the willpower is cultivated, strengthened, and made operative in right directions. Young people need to go into training for it. Those who are determined to have athletic willpower must take for it the kind of exercise they need. The athlete trains for his race, and the mind must be put into training if one will win life's race. It is, says Professor Matthews, only by continued strenuous efforts, repeated again and again, day after day, week after week, and month after month, that the ability can be acquired to fasten the mind to one subject, however abstract and naughty, to the exclusion of everything else. The process of obtaining this self-mastery, this complete command of one's mental powers, is a gradual one its length varying with the mental constitution of each person, but its acquisition is worth infinitely more than the utmost labor it ever cost. Perhaps the most valuable result of all education, it was said by Professor Huxley, is the ability to make yourself do the thing you have to do when it ought to be done, whether you like it or not. It is the first lesson which ought to be learned, and however early a man's training begins, it is probably the last lesson which he learns thoroughly. When Henry Ward Beecher was asked how it was that he could accomplish so much more than other men, he replied, I don't do more but less than other people. They do all their work three times over, once in anticipation, once in actuality, once in rumination. I do mine in actuality alone, doing it once instead of three times. This was by the intelligent exercise of Mr. Beecher's willpower and concentrating his mind upon what he was doing at a given moment and then turning to something else. Anyone who has observed successful men closely has noticed this characteristic. One of the secrets of a successful life is to be able to hold all of your energies upon one point, to focus all of the scattered rays of the mind upon one place or thing. The mental reservoir of most people is like a leaky dam which we sometimes see in the country where the greater part of the water flows out without going over the wheel and doing the work of the mill. The habit of mind wandering, of worrying about this and that. 
genius, that power which dazzles mortal eyes, is oft but perseverance in disguise. Many a man would have been a success had he connected his fragmentary efforts. Spasmodic, disconnected attempts, without concentration, uncontrolled by any fixed idea, will never bring success. It is a continuity, a purpose, alone that achieves results. The way to learn to run is to run. The way to learn to swim is to swim. The way to learn to develop willpower is by the actual exercise of willpower in the business of life. The man that exercises his will, says an English essayist, makes it a stronger and more effective force in proportion to the extent to which such exercise is intelligently and perseveringly maintained. The fourth putting of willpower is a means of strengthening willpower. The will becomes strong by exercise. To stick to a thing till you are a master is a test of intellectual discipline and power. It is astonishing, says Dr. Theodore Kyler, how many men lack this power of holding on until they reach the goal. They can make a sudden dash, but they lack grit. They are easily discouraged. They get on as long as everything goes smoothly, but when there is friction, they lose heart. They depend on stronger personalities for their spirit and strength. They lack independence or originality. They only dare to do what others do. They do not step boldly from the crowd and act fearlessly. What is needed by him who would succeed in the highest degree possible is careful planning. He is to accumulate reserved power that he may be equal to all emergencies. Thomas Starr King said that the great trees of California gave him his first impression of the power reserve. It was the thought of the reserve energies that had been compacted into them, he said, that stirred me. The mountains had given them their iron and rich stimulants. The hills had given them their soil. The clouds had given their rain and snow. And a thousand summers and winters had poured forth their treasures about their vast roots. No young man can hope to do anything above the commonplace who has not made his life a reservoir of power on which he can constantly draw, which will never fail him in any emergency. Be sure that you have stored away in your powerhouse the energy, the knowledge that will be equal to the great occasion when it comes. If I were 20 and had but 10 years to live, said a great scholar and writer, I would spend the first nine years accumulating knowledge and getting ready for the tenth. I will. There are no two words in the English language which stand out in bolder relief, like kings upon a checkerboard. To so great an extent are the words, I will. There is strength, depth, and solidity, decision, confidence, and power, determination, vigor, and individuality, in the round ringing tone which characterizes its delivery. It talks to you of triumph over difficulties, of victory in the face of discouragement, of will to promise and strength to perform, of lofty and daring enterprise, of unfettered aspirations, and of the thousand and one solid impulses by which man masters impediments in the way of progression. As one has well said, he who is silent is forgotten. He who does not advance falls back. He who stops is overwhelmed, distanced, and crushed. He who ceases to become greater becomes smaller. He who leaves off gives up. The stationary is the beginning of the end. It precedes death. To live is to achieve, to will without ceasing. Be thou a hero. Let thy might tramp on eternal snows its way. And through the ebon walls of night, hew down a passage unto day. And that, warriors, is what I want you to know today. I want you to know that you can live with the weak, subject to the changes in weather will of an ordinary man. Or you can live with the bold, strong, intensely disciplined will of a warrior. Until next time, always believe.